Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Dr. Jen. And today we're going to be talking about optimizing foot and ankle health and why you might start feeling pains there in the first place. Let's get into it. Before we get into it, I don't want anyone to miss out on any of the body optimization episodes we've put out as a part of this series or any of Jen's incredible content that she comes out with on a weekly basis on the YouTube channel. There is so much that your body could benefit from just by trying out some of the things that she puts out and some of the episodes we put out as the podcast highlight. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell before you continue on into the video and make sure you comment below what types of topics do you want to hear about because that's how we know what episodes to make in the future. All right, foot and ankle health. Foot and ankle health optimization, part of the optimization series by Dr. Dom. <laughs> I mean, six episodes in and you're finally saying it, so <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> now, if you're looking for more specifics, we've done so many podcast episodes. We so have, many. And we're going to have that linked up below. But if you hear something, go look for that link because we've done foot and ankle mobility specifically. We've done chronic ankle sprains, uh, shin splints, bunions, both bunions. We've done bunionette, bunionette and, bunions. and bunions, <laughs> metatarsalgia, Morton's neuroma, flat feet, high arches, plantar fasciitis. We had an episode with Dr. Emily and she really is a functional podiatrist who talked a lot about such a great episode. Anything from bunions other, to orthotics to lots of other guests that have talked foot health, but we have she's probably our favorite. <laughs> she's, our, she's the one that we kind of is our go to. She is so knowledgeable in the way that she really ex takes the time to explain when is surgery important and when do you need to yeah. take note of it because we're not anti surgery. We're just for, you know, functional movement. And we've done stress fractures, corns on your feet, turf toe, Haglund deformity, peroneal tendonitis. It's like a tongue twister. Oh, There's so many there of them. There's so many you episodes. Made it. But if there is something that you didn't hear that I listed off and you're like, I yeah. have had this foot ankle issue please let us know yeah we love talking about the feet of course fifo barefoot shoes is what we wear and we've noticed so much benefit and that's definitely going to be something that plays into this episode because now we want to talk about why do we feel like people develop so many foot and ankle pains mm -hmm. one of the main ones and i feel like we can say this because there's evidence that backs it up also people might call us biased because we're so into wearing barefoot shoes but shoes. Yeah. The shoes that we wear result in such drastic change in our feet, both anatomically, how they look, but mostly how they function. Mm -hmm. We've been able to see this in the differences. Like I have more flatter feet and then Dom has very high arches. So we have yeah. very different feet, yeah. uh, very different ways that we've grown up and used our feet from him being mm -hmm. in cleats and playing football and sports and me doing gymnastics and being barefoot all the time. Yeah. So just like the differences and yet the benefit that we've both been able to see not only in ourselves but also in our clients and so many people on social media who come to me after and are like, I was told never to be in barefoot shoes and you know, I got Vivo barefoot yeah. and it was the best thing that ever happened to my foot. It's this thing where the fix to foot pains has become putting more technologies yeah. and braces and orthotics and things around our feet so that they can't move as much, so that they can't go through the ranges of motion that they're supposed to, so that our arch muscles can't work to support our foot right. on its own. Similar to shoes, like sh many shoes have a heel in them, so our, our heel is raised, even if it's a quarter inch to an inch beyond where our toes are at that's making our Achilles tendon work slightly less. Mm -hmm. And over time, our Achilles tendon is going to assume more of a shortened position because it's used to operating that way. Our toes aren't able to extend as much with rigid bottoms. Mm -hmm. Our foot doesn't need to get used to accepting or landing on the ground because we have such cushioned soles in these shoes. So right. all across the board, the footwear that we put on, is it helping or hurting our foot become stronger and more mobile? We're not anti anything. Like I think there's a time and place when you might need a little bit more support if you have a specific injury happening at that moment a stress fracture you know you just had an acute injury whatever it may be you might need a little bit more support from orthotic yeah. or from a more supportive shoe however if you're not working your way toward back to what your foot can do i think that's where it becomes really detrimental and so we because of the environment of these shoes that provide the support we end up then lacking in the mobility and strength needed around our foot, 
our toes and our ankle. So we, we start to lose our ankle dorsiflexion, our lack of ability to spread and open our toes, to mm-hmm. move our big toe, to lift our toes. And we need this toe extension and toe splay in order to have functional feet in order to have the strength and stability of our inner intrinsic foot muscles we need the ability to move our toes so if so if we lack that ability to start to move our toes like our fingers yeah. well then we're going to lose the function in how they should move and how many people out there can move their toes like Exactly like their fingers. <laughs> Not many. It would be kind of creepy when we have lost all this beautiful mobility and strength, yeah. like within our arch even, we should have the ability to flatten yet support within our arch mm-hmm. to assume the natural functions of the foot. And then we wonder why when we're walking barefoot around our house or around our yard, we start to have pain and it hurts <laughs> and we don't feel like we can do those movements without pain. And then the the solution we're often given is, oh, wear these shoes or slippers Mm -hmm. in your house or Mm -hmm. wear these at all times, rather than let's build the function of that foot back up. We will have these deficiencies in our mobility and our strength start to crop up in our foot. And then we try to do different, usually repetitive behaviors, even if it's just walking, even if we need to walk a lot for work or do things around the house, or if we pick up a new exercise habit and we Mm -hmm. wonder why are these foot and ankle pains starting to pop up? Oh, it's because your feet and your ankles don't have the requisite strength and now you're doing this repetitive activity where you might start to get some different tendonitis, tendinopathies or some different stress fractures mm-hmm. because your foot just can't handle that and then we start to have these overuse injuries pop up like plantar fasciitis, like stress fractures, like Achilles tendonitis. So what are the exercises that we can start to do? Something that I love, I see Dom do every single day and it's it makes f- me so proud. <laughs> She's talking about toe spacers and like something that she always does is put her socks between her toes because it's just this natural little toe spacers and it's like a little foot stretch foot and toe stretch during the day but do you know the main reason that the thing that sparks oh i gotta just put these socks in my toes so that you don't put them on the ground so that i don't leave them laying around on the ground and i'm just like oh i'll just put these in my toes and then next time i'm up in the room i'll toss them in the hamper or take them off because i like i find socks around the house all the time i am notorious for just taking my socks off and like and I'm on the ground in yeah. the living room. So I'm glad that you found a better use. And then we for look over in Dante's put- like chewing on one of them. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> Anyways, toe spacers. Now we do have nice toe splay from... The toe splay from Naboso. So ne- from Naboso. Dr. Emily, our functional podiatrist yeah. friend. And we're going to have the discount code and the link down in show notes as well that you can yeah. use. Such a fantastic one. And once you do that passive toe splay, doing this consistently, this is something that takes time. Again, yes. think about it. How old am I? How long have I done the same thing with my feet? Or put my feet in really squished shoes. Yes. That don't, don't have the space to move my toes. And we start to have this helplessness where it's like, I'm never going to be able to change how my foot looks or functions, which is not true. I mean, maybe our foot, how it looks, won't significantly change. But, the but we can significantly change the function and yeah. our ability to move and activate those toes. So we want to put the passive toe splay in and then we want to work on some active toe spreads. Yes. And especially early on, this might be difficult. Exactly. But you'll notice like it starts to change significantly if you start to do it more often. Like we have friends that are like, oh my God, I can move my pinky toe now and are so yeah. excited. And I'm like, I know, isn't it amazing? And they've been doing it for change? six, eight months. Yeah. Like they've been doing it for a long time. So it's amazing. And then we have to also be aware that we're putting mobility back into our ankles and our big toes. I think this mm-hmm. is so massive, so huge. Because again, if we're wearing more very supportive shoes, like running shoes or hokas, I think is what it is. Hokas, one of them, um, yeah. It, it kind of, it takes that process of walking and it puts it in the shoe for you where we need that toe push off. So we need to actually, we should have some toe extension before we push off every step that we take. But if we're wearing super supportive shoes that already have that toe lift, it's kind of doing it for us without needing that extra mobility in the toe. And we start to lose that big toe mobility, which reduces the stretch and the function of our plantar fascia and our muscles on the inside of the foot. So we need our big toe to have functional mobility, which means it should be able to stretch. And you can start this just by stretching your big toe, Mm -hmm. um, just with your hand. You do it against a wall. You can do it kneeling and sitting on your toes if you can tolerate that. There's so many ways that you can you can stick your foot behind you as you're when you're standing in line and start to stretch your toe. Like there's so many ways that we can stretch our big toe, but we just need to start doing it. 
I yeah. think that's what's so important. And our ankle, like move our, whether you're stretching your calf or you're hanging off a curb, talking with a friend, put your heel off and stretch it on the curb. Like there's so many ways that we can get, start to improve ankle dorsiflexion as well. Activations. I like the one where you said hanging off of a curb, but then going up into the heel race to start activating and strengthening through that mobility is of vital importance. <laughs> and then something that we've just been talking about to this point already is going barefoot more often. Yeah. Try to be barefoot more often. Again, initially, it might not feel super comfortable if it's not something that you're used to. Mm -hmm. So trying for short stints around the house, mm -hmm. doing half hour, hour of chores around the house without the slippers or the house shoes that you normally wear. When you get a little bit more used to it, go out to run an errand, to go to the grocery store, just walking around half an hour to an hour out in public in a more barefoot profile shoe. Yeah, not just barefoot. You don't have to go to the store without shoes. Yeah, going to the store barefoot <laughs> can be dangerous depending on where you live. Probably um, not. <laughs> and the more that you do this, the more you will feel that natural strength, that natural mobility inherently come back to the foot because you're using it how it's supposed to. You're working out at home, if you're doing squats and stuff inside a house, especially, mm -hmm. kick off your shoes and just go barefoot. If, now, if you're doing more hit style and you don't feel comfortable with that, that's okay. I do hit barefoot. I will say that. I always have and I do. But if you don't feel comfortable, at least with your squats and your static exercises, your base of support starts with our feet. And this is why we talk about the feet and ankles so much is because our base of support starts at our feet. So if we want strong glutes, strong hips, strong core, like it starts with how we're moving and how we're functioning mm -hmm. at the feet. And that's why we do believe that going more barefoot gets you more grounded into your entire body so that you feel good. But it's also going to help to prevent those future pains and injury that often happen within the feet. So starting to get comfortable with that is such an important aspect. We have a foot and ankle plan as a part of the Gen Health membership that starts to take you through the process of working on a lot of these different components that we're talking about, working on the toe mobility, the foot mobility, starting to build up the strength and activation back in the foot muscles, the muscles that cross the ankle, the calf. So if you want to check that out, there's a free week trial. You can always go try out the week, see if the plan is for you, see if you're noticing any benefit, but go try that out if you need a little bit help on what do I do? What do I do to get started on all these different components of foot and ankle health? There are also 10 other plans that you can jump into for all different areas of the body as well as some full body plans. So go check that out. If you're looking at getting Vivo Barefoot shoes, you can also use code TOB to get 15% off any regularly priced shoe. We have so many people in our community that have started using them and absolutely love them. But those are some of our takes on how to improve and optimize your foot and ankle health. Thanks so much for sticking around for another episode. Hopefully that helped to give you a better idea of what you can start to do today, right now, to start improving your foot and ankle health. If you have any more questions or specifics about anything we talked about or anything else you want us to talk about, please let us know below. And of course, we're going to have all these specific episodes also linked up in the description so that you can find a little bit more specifically on what you may need if you're dealing with current foot and ankle pain.